Infamous killer Theodore Robert Bundy would terrorize America from 1974 to 1978. His crimes would span across seven states. Even after his initial apprehension, he would escape and continue to terrorize the country. Bundy's last stop would be Florida, a state known for its tough-on-crime approach. Let's take a look at the jails and prisons that held one of America's most prolific serial killers. Many already know the story of Ted Bundy. He was a serial killer that mainly operated on the West Coast, but also committed crimes in Florida. Bundy was known as charismatic and handsome, and was one of the first serial killers to intrigue an entire nation. Biographer Anne Rule described Bundy as a sadistic sociopath who took pleasure from another human's pain and the control he had over his victims, to the point of death and even after. Typically, Bundy would approach his victims in public and bludgeon them, taking them to a secondary location before assaulting them. He would do unspeakable acts to the corpse. Bundy would eventually confess to 30 murders, but not before denying his involvement for some time. Although there is no consensus as to when his crimes would begin, 1974 is the earliest documented homicide. On August 16, 1975, Bundy would be arrested by Utah Highway Patrol in Granger, Utah. He would be released on scene as there was insufficient evidence to prove any murder, but he would be placed under surveillance. This would lead to his arrest on his first serious charges. He would be detained in the local jail, although I couldn't conclusively find what jail he was housed in. The trial would take place in the 3rd District Court of Salt Lake City in February 1976. He would be tried and convicted for kidnapping and assault. This would earn him a sentence of 1 to 15 years in Utah Department of Corrections. He would be sent to Utah State Prison. The now closed prison was located about 20 miles southwest of Salt Lake City. The state decided to relocate the prison in 2020 after the surrounding area began to get built up with residential and commercial buildings. The prison had a capacity of over 4,000 offenders and housed women offenders in a separate housing unit. On an interesting note, the prison housing units are named after the surrounding mountains. Just eight months after his prison term began, he would attempt his first prison escape. Bundy would be found hiding in the bushes inside the prison with a road map, airline schedule, and social security card. Prison staff would place him in solitary confinement at the prison following the failed escape. While at Utah State Prison, he was charged in Colorado with murder. Bundy would be transported to the Garfield County Jail in Glenwood Springs. The case was out of Pitkin County and he would be transported to Aspen for the preliminary hearing. Bundy was not required to wear cuffs and shackles because he was serving as his own attorney. While in the law library, he jumped out of a window, out of sight of the officer in charge of his custody. Bundy would turn into a mountain man, evading police by climbing Aspen Mountain and hiking towards Maroon Lake. Throughout his time, he was evading roadblocks and search parties. He would steal a car and return to Aspen where he would be pulled over then taken into custody. This would not be his last successful escape from custody. Now, back in Garfield County Jail, he began to plan his next escape. Somehow, Bundy acquired a hacksaw and spent the next six months slowly sawing a hole in the reinforced bars. He also lost 35 pounds so he could squeeze into tight spaces. Bundy smartly planned his escape for December 30th, knowing that jail staff would be minimal due to the holidays. He placed books in his bunk to make it seem like he was sleeping. Odd for today, but the chief jailer lived in an apartment on jail grounds. He broke through the ceiling in the apartment, changed clothes, and walked out the front door. It would be noon on December 31st before anyone knew he was gone. Bundy knew he had to get as far as possible, unlike his last escape. He eventually made his way to Florida by way of Chicago, then Michigan. Would Bundy change his ways and lay low to not draw attention to himself? No. No, he wouldn't. He would revert to his murderous ways. Bundy would kill three women and seriously injure an additional three after going on a rampage across Florida. He would be caught driving a stolen car near the Florida-Alabama border, and he would fight the officer attempting to take him into custody. As he was being transported to jail, Bundy said, I wish you had killed me. Before moving on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this content. Bundy would have been taken to the Escambia County Jail following his arrest. Change of venue would be granted and the trial would be moved to Miami. He would also spend time in the Orange County Jail in Orlando while his second trial was ongoing. In the end, Bundy would be convicted and receive three death sentences. At his last sentence, he would yell, tell the jury they were wrong. Bundy would be moved to death row at Florida State Prison. This would be his last stop. Florida State Prison is located in Bradford County, Florida. 
It has a capacity of 1,460 offenders. Florida State Prison is the only facility in the state to use prison in the name and not institution to identify it. Almost nine years following his conviction, his day would come to meet the Reaper. While at Florida State Prison, he would complete a series of interviews with Stephen Michaud and Hugh Ainsworth. Bundy's last day on earth would be January 24, 1989. He exhausted all appeals and was denied clemency by Governor Bob Martinez. When asked for his last words, he would say, Jim and Fred, I'd like you to give my love to my family and friends. Jim Coleman was his minister and Fred Lawrence his attorney. The electric chair would shock Bundy until his heart stopped beating and was pronounced dead at 7.16 a.m. He would be the 20th person executed in Florida since the death penalty was reinstated in 1976. Outside Florida State Prison, spectators had gathered and cheered at the news of his death. Bundy's body would leave the prison in a white hearse. This would be the end of Bundy's time in prison. Bundy would spend time in several county jails in quite a few states. Although he would spend the majority of his incarcerated time at two prisons, Utah State Prison and Florida State Prison. Bundy was an accomplished escape artist, but in the end he couldn't keep himself from killing. Were authorities in Colorado responsible for the Florida victims? Let me know in the comments. As always, see you next time.